Methods to find maximum or minimum value. Determine the minimum value of the function x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now in this video, I'll explain you how to use different methods to find extreme value of a parabola. So a parabola represented by a quadratic equation will always have a turning point. And at that turning point, it will be either a maximum or absolute minimum value. If the parabola opens up, then it has a minimum value. And if it opens downwards, then it has a maximum value. Now, when a given equation is like x squared minus 8x plus 12, coefficient of x is positive. Since it is positive, it opens up and it will have a minimum value. So in this case, We'll find minimum value using a couple of methods. One of them is the vertex form. To convert it into vertex form, what we do is we kind of make it a perfect square. So let's go through the process. So the equation is x squared minus 8x plus 12. We work with these two numbers. So I'm putting a square bracket here to show that we are going to work with these two numbers and keep 12 on the side for the moment. Now, the next step is that do half of this number 8, which is coefficient of x. So half of 8 is 4. Square it and subtract the same number, minus 4 square. So what we do here in the next step is we do half of the coefficient of x and square that number. Half of 8 is 4 and 4 square is a number which we add and subtract. When you add and subtract the same number, you're not changing the equation, right? It remains the same. It is as if you are adding a zero, right? Let's put them in a square bracket and keep 12 on the side. Now you will see that the first three terms, that is x squared minus 8x plus 4 squared, forms a perfect square. So this is a trinomial where the first term is x squared, the middle term is twice x and 4 and the third term is 4 squared so it forms a perfect square so we can write this as x minus sign from here and 4 from the other side square so these three terms become x minus 4 whole square minus we have 4 square let me write this as 16 now 4 square is 16 plus 12 now we can open the bracket and write down this equation in vertex form it is x minus 4 whole square and combine these two terms minus 16 plus 12 gives us minus 4 now this equation is in the vertex form and from here we know what the vertex is vertex in this case is at 4 and the minimum value is minus 4 so the vertex here is 4 with a minimum value of minus 4 so the question here was, determine the minimum value of the function. So the minimum value of the function is minus 4, right? So what we did was, we took our function, added and subtracted square of half of b, the coefficient of x. Do you see that? It helped to make a perfect square. And then we had the equation in the vertex form. This method is called completing the squares method, right? Let me write down the name completing the squares or complete squares. With this method, we do get vertex, right? And you can see the number of steps. This was simpler since the coefficient of x was 1. If this would have been not 1 but some other number, in the first step, we would have factored that out, right? So as a very simple example, I'm trying to demonstrate here different methods. We'll look into more completing the squares details in coming videos. Well, let me answer this question first, and that is minimum value is, is minus 4, right? Now, as you can see here, this is a parabola, which will be opening upwards, and the vertex will be as defined here, okay? Since it opens upwards, we have a minimum value. Now, let's look into some other methods to find the minimum and now I'll introduce you to a method which is called partial factoring. In partial factoring 
we do not factor the whole term we just factor the first two terms and let's see how it works we are given trinomial fx equals to x square minus 8x plus 12 I can factor just these two and then write this as x and we are left with x minus 8 plus 12 right as you can see here it really means that at two points where x is 0 or x equals to 8 the value of the function is 12 do you understand what I'm trying to say here is if you sketch it you'll get like this right so you'll find if you draw a horizontal line right so in this particular case, you will find that at x equals to 0 and at x equals to 8, the value of the function will be 12. Do you understand? This horizontal line will give you the value of the function at x equals to 0 and at x equals to 8. Now, axis of symmetry will be right in between that line. Do you understand? Axis of symmetry. Every parabola will have an axis of symmetry and the meaning of axis of symmetry is that the points on the either side are symmetric if you draw a horizontal line. That means that our vertex will lie in the center of these two points, right? So the center should be at a value which is midway between 0 and 8, correct? So if I find a point x equals to 0 plus 8 divided by 2, which is 4 for us, I know equation of axis of symmetry is x equals to 4. And therefore, I also know that at x equals to 4, we have a minimum in this case. Do you see? So we came to the same result. At x equals to 4, we have a minimum. So we could have arrived at this value so fast using partial factoring. Now, one more method is that if you are given an equation in standard form, then you can use a formula. That is, always, if I have a general equation, let us say ax square plus bx plus c. Let's say y equals to ax square plus bx plus c. This is quadratic function in standard form. Now here, what is the point at which you will have maximum or minimum? The point will be at x equals to minus b by 2a. So at x equals to minus b by 2a, always, we will have maximum or minimum. In fact, x equals to minus b by 2a is equation of axis of symmetry. Now, once you know the point, you can always plug in the value and find the answer. That means f of the value of function at minus b by 2a it will be your maxima or minima depending on a whether it opens up or down whether it is negative or positive do you understand so that is how we can quickly find the point where maximum value or minimum value will lie or axis of symmetry exists do you understand so these are a couple of ways in which we can do and of course you can always factor it correct this one was easy factoring so we could have factored this also so the last is factoring and I could have written this function in the factored form. We are looking for two numbers whose product is 12 and whose sum is minus 8. So the numbers are 6 and 2, right? So I could have written x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals to x. Now we need minus, so both should be negative, right? And product is positive, minus 6 times x minus 2. So once you have your equation in factored form, then you know where the maxima or minimum lies. Well, this is positive, so we are looking for a minimum, and that should be in between the two factors, that is 6 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 8 divided by 2, which is again 4. So at x equals to 4, we have axis of symmetry and our minimum. So we get the same result. Do you see that? And we have here on this page, one, two, three, four methods. So the four methods which you could use are completing the squares, partial factoring, the formula itself, x equals to minus b by 2a, or factoring. All these methods help you to find the minimum value or the value at which the function will have minimum in such a case where a, the leading coefficient, is positive.